The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol subpoenaed some of former President Trump's closest legal associates and allies. The panel is seeking documents and testimony from Rudy Giuliani, Jenna Ellis, Sidney Powell, and Boris Epstein for their role in challenging the 2020 election results and pushing Trump's false claims of widespread election fraud. Investigators are demanding documents and testimony by early February. So Catherine Herridge is tracking this investigation for us, and she's joining me now uh, to explain all of these latest developments. This is all really interesting. Um, Catherine, so uh, they want to talk to Rudy Giuliani. What sort of information are they looking to get from him? And I'm wondering whether or not he's responded yet. Well, Anne-Marie, the thing to remember with these new subpoenas is that the select committee is trying to build a timeline. That's what all good investigations do. And they say they're trying to gather evidence about what they describe as contributing factors to the violence on January 6th. And to that end, they say they want to talk to Rudy Giuliani because he pushed these false election claims. And more specifically, what kind of legal strategies did he develop for the president's consideration to either block the certification of the Electoral College or overturn the election results? Uh, I've spent actually a lot of uh, the overnight trying to reach Rudy Giuliani's uh, communications advisor. It's, it's kind of changed us a number of times <laughs> in uh, recent months, but I'm going to reach out to them and try and get the latest reaction to the subpoena from the Hill. So then it makes a lot of sense why they want to talk to uh, Sidney Powell, because we know she was one of the sort of up front and center um, when it came to sort of spreading the big lie and also, you know, court cases and all that sort of stuff. Um, they also want to talk to Jenna Ellis, and then they want to talk to a former aide of President Trump as well. Why do they have interest in those other two as well? Well, I think you look at these subpoenas, they're kind of two buckets. There's Giuliani and Powell. That's kind of the bucket of pushing the election claim frauds. And then when you look at Ellis and Epstein, the committee wants to understand the legal advice they provided about the constitutional authority of then Vice President Mike Pence to stop or stall the certification of the Electoral College. I, I think this is really a critical element because a former White House official told me that they believe President Trump had bad legal advice about Pence's ability to block the certification, and that may have had a tremendous impact with his actions on January 6th. Oh, that is so interesting. Mm -hmm. So they are asking for documents. Uh, they want the documents in early February, and they'd like to see these individuals testify. A lot has been made about people who don't testify, but the reality of it is hundreds have been willing to cooperate with this investigation. What is the likelihood that these people will? Well, I can tell you what we heard from Sidney Powell. She gave us a statement late last night saying that she was looking forward to providing records and other evidence to the committee that she said would support her claims of election fraud that she went on to say were essentially ignored on a mass scale. So she's holding firm to her position and indicating that she's willing to cooperate. We've really not had an indication from the others who were subpoenaed whether they will cooperate or they'll provide some kind of limited cooperation. So provide records, but maybe not sit for deposition. And I just want to talk about that for a minute. That's a strategy that the former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, has used. And as you know, Anne-Marie, the Justice Department is still considering whether they should hold him in criminal contempt of Congress. And the reason that's a harder call than what we saw with Steve Bannon, who provided no cooperation, is they have to weigh the fact that Meadows sort of cooperated with congressional investigators, right? He provided some records. And so it makes it a harder argument that he should be criminally held in contempt of Congress. Well, of course, if you hold everyone in contempt of Congress, then no one will be motivated to cooperate at all. Um, so you, you got to have some balance there. Um, in the meantime, investigators also want to obtain phone records from Eric Trump and Kim Kimberly Guilfoyle. She is Donald Trump Jr.'s girlfriend, now fiance, and she was also a fixture on the campaign trail, always by his side. What information uh, are they expecting to get in relation in, that's related to the, to the attack on the Capitol? Well, Anne-Marie, again, go back to that idea we started with, which is that congressional investigators need to build a timeline. These investigations succeed or fail based 
on the quality of the evidence and the timeline so they can match up what people are saying versus what they actually wrote and what they actually did. So they're looking at the events leading up to January 6th. So think back to the rally on the ellipse. Who was on the ellipse? It was the Trump children as well as Kimberly Guilfoyle. So they want to see what their communications were on that morning. We're still working to confirm that the committee has already received some of the phone records from Eric Trump and Kimberly Guilfoyle. And again, that helps them piece together the timeline and understanding what people's intent and motivation was before the violence spilled over at the Capitol. Wow. Um, so many threads to pull together. Uh, Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's going to be quite a tapestry when it's done. It is. Um, Catherine, thank you so much. You're welcome.